everyone and welcome back to FSI DFS. I'm McKinley 412. I'm one of the MLB coaches here. Uh, we got another early slate to talk about. Uh, there's going to be quite a few early slates, uh, a lot of day games uh, going throughout the month of April. It's still pretty cold across the majority of the nation. Uh, there's still snow flying around. Uh, so any daylight, any sunshine, some warmth that these teams can get, uh, they're going to be taking advantage of. So Get ready for quite a few early slates throughout this month. I'm going to try my best to get a video out for every single early slate. Um, but at FSI, uh, we also have videos for the main slates as well. Uh, so Mega Roller 31 he is uh, my partner here at FSI. He's another one of the MLB coaches. He's got a video out or we'll have a video out for the main slate uh, on Monday night. So please go check that one out. He'll give you all the information that you need to know uh, regarding that one. Uh, before we begin, though, uh, once again, we are FSI DFS. Uh, we provide uh, fantasy cores across all sports. Uh, this is kind of what a sheet looks like for baseball. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. We got we provide cores for DraftKings uh, and FanDuel. Uh, we cover all of the showdowns, uh, pitchers that we really like across all the different uh, salary tiers, our favorite stacks, uh, GPP stacks, leverage stacks. Uh, cheap stacks and tiers. We cover it all. Obviously, we can't give a full lineup, uh, but what we would do is we typically give you like one pitcher, uh, two of the infield plays, um, and then maybe one or two outfielders uh, to go along with that. So you got like four blanks. Um, so yeah, obviously, we can't give you a full core or a full lineup. That's not good. We do not like that in the DFS industry, uh, but at least with the cores, we can provide you uh, some information to kind of guide you into the right direction uh, when building your lineups. So let's head back to this slate. Uh, I think it's going to be more of a three-game slate. This St. Louis-Pittsburgh game is looking like a postponement, uh, just waiting to happen. Uh, the phone app says 90% chance of rain pretty much all day long in St. Louis. Uh, thunderstorms at that. Uh, so I'm not going to spend really much any time, if anything, on that St. Louis game. Uh, we'll just be kind of focusing on this three-game slate. All right, so we can kind of cover all the pitchers here just because, you know, we'll have the time with only three games. Uh, but it's pretty ugly, as you can see. And that's going to happen every single year uh, as the teams, you know, they all start with their ace on opening day, and it's amazing and wonderful. And then we hit, like, the fourth day of the season, and you're just like, ugh. Like, Savali is the ace of the slate? Yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, Savali, you know, he's not a bad pitcher. We'll start off with him. He had great numbers, uh, last season. He went 12 and five, uh, 3.84 ERA and really translated it into a very solid spring as well. Uh, he had 10 innings pitched in the spring, 13 strikeouts. More importantly, he held opponents to just a 176 batting average. He's going up against Kansas City. Kansas City has only scored seven runs in their first three games. They went three, one, and then three. Uh, so he's going up against an offense that is really struggling out of the gates. He's clearly the best pitcher on this slate. Do I like paying 9-5 uh, for Savali? Not really. Uh, but is it almost justified given how limited the pitching options are this slate? Pretty much. You're kind of almost handcuffed into him. Hauser for Milwaukee. Uh, he's not much of a strikeout guy. Uh, he's not Peralta. He's not Woodruff. He's not Burns. You know, the other three stud Milwaukee starters. He's not a strikeout guy, uh, but he's got some pretty decent numbers. Uh, he had some decent numbers last year. He's got decent numbers in his career, and he did pretty decently in the spring. 12 innings pitched. He held opponents to a 209 batting average and he had a 0.83 whip. Uh, so pretty solid numbers, pretty good numbers. Uh, 8.9K. Again, I don't think there's going to be much to go with in the pitchers. So I feel like you're almost handcuffed into Savali and Hauser. And one other guy that I do have quite a bit of interest, uh, but it is not this next guy, um, Carlos Hernandez for Kansas City. I might be way different on this one than the rest of the industry is, uh, but so be it. You know, I'm going to go with the numbers and what they're doing. It's worked out so far. Uh, we were high on the Chicago White Sox going up against Scooball. Uh, Scooball, great numbers, but he was a lefty in Chicago. We got them at single-digit ownership on Sunday, which was fantastic because they put up a 10 spot. 
Um, we faded Woodruff, we faded Peralta, and that worked both times. So we're going to be fading Hernandez here uh, outside of like a GPP or a couple lineups into a GPP. He had some solid numbers last year. Not going to ignore that. Um, so he definitely can pitch. I'm not ignoring that. Uh, but his spring training was really, really rough. Uh, and it wasn't just one start or two starts. Like he was rough in every single start that he pitched. He went 18 innings. So it's not a super small sample size. 18 innings, he allowed 21 earned runs and eight home runs. So he had an ERA just through the roof, approaching double digits, uh, if not double digit ERA during that time. Eight home runs allowed in 18 innings. So I'm going to have some strong interest in the Cleveland Bats. Um, again, I might be a little bit different than their industry. If so, I'm going to be even more heavy on Cleveland uh, just because, you know, I'm just going to keep the spring training record going and kind of fade this guy. Uh, obviously, it's a super small slate. So if you do want to go with him on a GPP, totally fine with it. Uh, but as for me, my first GP lineup will not be having this, and I'll probably be targeting Cleveland uh, pretty well. Uh, Hudson, he is a, I mean, this is a St. Louis, so I don't think this game's going to play, but if you want to know more about him, he's a late first-round pick, uh, decent prospect, decent pitcher, fine numbers, uh, don't mind him at all. Going up against Pittsburgh, 8.1K, but I don't think it's going to happen. Super rain risk, uh, it's going to postpone, don't do it. Zimmerman uh, for Baltimore, left-handed pitcher here. He is a career five-plus ERA uh, kind of pitcher. He had a ish, ish in the middle kind of spring training. He had one start where he went three innings and you know was lights out, uh, but he had two other starts where he went two innings and he allowed three or more earned runs in both of them. Uh, so not so great. Uh, not a career uh, great pitcher. He struggled throughout. It's going up against Milwaukee, a uh, Milwaukee team offensively that hasn't really gotten it together yet. Uh, the bottom half of their order is just doing absolutely nothing. They're really being carried by that top half of the order. Um, more than usual, uh, the top half is carrying them, I should say. Um, but yeah, I, I think Milwaukee is still the best team in that central division. They're going to figure out at some point. Uh, and who better than against a guy like Bruce Zimmerman for Baltimore? And then after the Timberman's out, you get that Baltimore bullpen, one of the worst in baseball. Uh, so I think if Milwaukee wants to, you know, get over that early season slump in the offense, this is probably their way to do it. Hearn pitching for Texas, going up against Colorado. Uh, Colorado, you know, I think this game's going to be really interesting. Uh, you got Colorado outside of Coors Field. It's always interesting to see the dynamic of uh, the Rockies team in Coors Field and outside of Coors Field. And then you got Texas on the other side. Uh, just scoring a whole bunch of runs against Toronto. Um, obviously, Toronto's bullpen last year was kind of their downfall. Uh, they made some movements, uh, but it clearly hasn't helped too much to start off. Um, but yeah, but I, I kind of got a little distracted there. But Hurt, uh, you know, he's an okay pitcher. I don't really have too much interest in him. He's not going to be one of my top three pitchers that I'm going to be looking at tomorrow. Probably not even the top four pitchers that I'm looking at tomorrow. Left-handed pitcher going up against Colorado. Colorado has a lot of solid right-handed bats. I think of guys like Chris Bryant, Connor Joe, um, Rogers. There's three right there uh, that could do some damage to him. Uh, but the one guy I do want to talk about is Gomber. Austin Gomber, if you played MLB DFS last season, you recognize this name because there was a stretch where he was like the chalk pitcher every time he uh, was pitching. Because he was super cheap. He was under 7K uh, pretty much the entire season. And I mean, just look at these logs. It was like right in this point here, he was just constant chalk, game after game after game. And his salary just kind of never seemed to creep up just high enough. Uh, but you can also see as I scroll down, he's got games that are just atrocious. You know, negative 14, uh, negative three, negative three again, negative 0.3. Uh, so he can really struggle. Uh, but he's got some decent strikeout upside. You can kind of see in a couple of his games, he's got eight strikeouts, nine strikeouts, seven strikeouts. Like he has strikeout upside there, uh, but he also has a floor that is like almost nothing. And it is a little concerning. He is going up against Texas and Texas just put up how many runs against uh, Toronto? I think they scored like eight runs and then 12 runs uh, on Sunday here. So their offense is clicking. Um, so it is a little bit concerning. 
But Gomber, I think he would probably be my third option uh, at pitch at pitcher uh, on Sunday for this early slate. So let's dive into the bats here. I kind of already highlighted, you know, who I'm kind of interested in. Uh, I'm definitely interested in this Cleveland lineup. Uh, I mentioned Hernandez's struggles during spring training. Right-handed batters against Hernandez hit 435 against him. Now, like I said, he went 18 innings, so it's a pretty decent sample size. Um, he saw a lot of right-handed batters, and they still hit 435 against him. Uh, so some guys that I'm definitely going to be interested in are Jose Ramirez and actually Rosario. Uh, these are the two guys that have really been, you know, pushing Cleveland's offense to start this season. I know they scored zero. They got shut out in their second game, uh, but then they just scored 17 on Sunday. And these are kind of two guys that have kind of been leading the charge. Brandon Reyes had a fantastic spring training, kind of a rough start to the season, uh, all things considered. Miles Straw, he's a guy that if he gets on base, he's going to try to steal a base. Uh, so he's definitely got some upside with him there. And then I just can't talk about, uh, can't not talk about, can't talk about, uh, Stephen Kwan. Uh, he had a fantastic spring. I know I kind of, I didn't bash him. Uh, I just said he wasn't a scary bat uh, on the opening day video. But still, uh, one of the guys in our Discord brought it up. I can't remember who it was, F. Bon v or Cleveland Kid. You know, shout out to you guys. Uh, they mentioned he is not struck out during spring training, and he is not struck out uh, yet during the regular season. So he is very disciplined at the plate. And so far in the regular season, he is hitting 800. I can pretty much guarantee you it's not going to be uh, an 800 hitter all season long. Uh, but still, 2.2K. For a guy hitting that well with that discipline at the plate, you know, he's going to be making contact and putting that ball into play. That could be a great value for you right there. But I would definitely start with Jose Ramirez and Rosario uh, as your first two guys in, and then adding in one of those guys after that if you want to go with the Cleveland staff. Kansas City on the other side, I don't have too much interest just because uh, Savali uh, and just the limited amount of pitching uh, on the slate, I feel like I'm almost handcuffed into Savali. But if I was going to be going Kansas City, uh, let me get off the outfield. Yeah, take this guy out. Uh, Bobby Wood Jr., 2.4K. This guy is probably going to be the AL Rookie of the Year. He is so good. Uh, he's probably going to be closer to 4K by the end of the season. At this point, 2.4K is just far too cheap. If Kansas City does get it going and their offense is clicking. It's probably going to be built around uh, Bobby Wood Jr. right here. So I do like him. He bats high up in the order. Uh, he's just a five-tool player. He is fantastic. If you do want to go with that Kansas City stack, Savali, reverse splits pitcher, so kind of target those right-handed uh, Kansas City bats. So guys like Whit Merrifield, uh, Bobby Witt, and Salvador Perez at catcher, uh, 4.7K. So you can kind of see, you can almost build like a nice little game stack uh, with these guys. I'm probably not going to be doing it, but hey, three-game slate, go crazy. It's not uh, impossible that a game stack wins on a three-game slate. Uh, so let's clear the thing there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep in uh, Jose Ramirez, and I'm going to keep in Rosario, just because I think those are just two uh, great plays uh, to kind of start off your lineup. This game, I think, is going to be postponed. Uh, if you do want to go with St. Louis, I'd go guys like Carlson. Dickerson is a nice, cheap play for you. Goldschmidt and Arenado. Um, O'Neill, he's got some power to him. Just kind of struggling to start off this season. Edmund, that's like ninth in the lineup. DeJong, just really bad numbers against right-handed pitching. So I'm not too interested in him. And then Pittsburgh, yeah. Uh, so let's go to Milwaukee and Baltimore. Like I said, Milwaukee has really been carried by the top of their lineup so far. Uh, and they really haven't gotten anything from the bottom of their lineup. Uh, but Zimmerman, left-handed pitcher. And he's kind of interesting. I was looking at his splits. And last season, it was left-handed batters that were hitting him hard. He was a reverse that's pitcher last season. Uh, during spring training, uh, in his three starts, it was the righties that were hitting the best. So I, I don't know how much stock we want to put into his platoon stats at the moment. I'm not sure we really, we really can at the moment, just because he's shown such extremes on both ends. Um, but, you know, Yelich, we all know what he's capable of. Renfro, he's got that power uh, with the bombs. I think Narvaez at 3.5K is solid value. Uh, he was a guy last season that I, I 
I feel like I play them the most. You know how we kind of all gravitate towards certain players kind of as the season progresses? I feel like I was on Narvaez a whole lot last season um, for Milwaukee. And at 3.5K, that's definitely cheaper uh, than where he was. Long Kane, Adamez, you know, fine place. I, I think this Milwaukee offense is better than what we saw in that opening series against the Cubs. Uh, so maybe that reduces some ownership uh, and we can get them at reduced ownership. But Milwaukee, I don't mind them in this game. Baltimore on the other side, I don't really have much interest. Again, it's kind of like the Kansas City thing. Uh, it's just a weaker offense going up against the pitcher that I'm kind of almost handcuffed into targeting and playing in Hauser. So if you do go with Baltimore, maybe you get some leverage there. You're probably going to get a whole lot of leverage if you go with Kansas City because of Savali's ownership, probably going to be through the roof. Um, but on, on Baltimore, you know, Santander, Mountcastle, uh, Mullins, Rias, it's, it's the same guys as it was, you know, last season and the same guys that will probably be this season for them. Going to the Colorado, Texas game, Texas, uh, like I said, they scored a whole bunch of runs against Toronto. I think it was eight and then three and then 12 um, against Toronto. They were just mashing them. Uh, it was really the bullpen that was really struggling for Toronto, which will be interesting to kind of note as the season progresses, just as like a side note, like that was what Toronto kind of fumbled upon last season, why they couldn't make that big run. Uh, they tried to change things some, some things up and maybe that's the, what's going to keep them back this season again. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, Texas, you know, their offense is clicking and the two guys that have been leading the charge have been Corey Seager and Nate Lowe. So let me throw Lowe in here. I will just highlight Corey Seager. Uh, Texas, they made those big splashes. They got Seager, they got Simeon um, from Toronto and LA respectively. But Seager and Lowe are kind of the two guys that have been uh, leading this Texas offense so far this season. And it's kind of nice for us on this early slate because they're both left-handed hitters. Gomber, I know he's a lefty, but hey, he is another reverse splits pitcher. We've had a lot of them lately. Um, Texas, they do have a lot of right-handed bats, but you know, they're two lefties. Lowe and Seager are definitely guys uh, that we could be targeting here as they've kind of leading, been leading the charge. On the other side, uh, Colorado going up against Hearn. It's probably going to be guys like CJ Cron. Actually, it's probably going to be guys like Chris Bryant, um, Connor Joe. I really do like Connor Joe. 3K, that is, hey, that's a pretty good salary. I'm just kind of seeing these salaries as I talk along here. 3K, that's really cheap. Uh, so I'll definitely have some strong interest in him. Uh, and then Rodgers, you know, oh, 3.3 for Rodgers. Uh, Rodgers and Joe, they're uh, pretty cheap there. Um, so you can get some serious, nice value for Colorado. Add in like a Bobby Witt and... I mean, you don't need all of this value, though. Okay, what do we got here? We got Lowe, Ramirez, Rosario, Bryant, and Joe. If I just throw in the top two guys, uh, top two pitchers, let's see, Svali and Hauser, 3.2K remaining, okay? Uh, I mean, maybe, don't, maybe I don't want the uh, this guy here. Uh, who did I say? Oh, Dickerson, that's who I was talking about, but that's going to be cranked up. Whatever. Uh, but still, there is plenty of salary. I don't think there's going to be any issue uh, finding um, value on this slate. I still think it's going to be a three-game slate. Uh, I just, yeah, postpone it. Get it out of your mind. If it does play, I'm probably not going to play any guys from it because it's probably going to be a lot of rain. And so, yeah, so that kind of wraps things up. I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Um, but please, go check out Mega Roller 31s video. He's going to have the main slate covered. Um, we're going to try to get videos out as much as we can. Uh, obviously, we've had some great feedback uh, the first couple of videos here, which has just been fantastic. And if like that continues to grow, uh, we'll just continue making more and more videos for you guys. So hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Like, thank you so much for watching these videos. Uh, it really does mean a lot to us and it does help us out. Um, so yeah, so that kind of covers the slate. So as always, Good luck in your contests, and we will see you in the next video.